But my caution here is not to say, you know, don't enjoy the happy moments too. My caution here is just to say, have a sense of awareness of internal awareness and external awareness that says, where is the main source of my drive coming from? Do I need something to happen to me to produce a good feeling to get me motivated and driven to go forward and do good in the world? Because if that's the case, we are in a lot of trouble because that is something we cannot control. Welcome to Ignite the Spark Within, a podcast designed to do just that, ignite your spark within you. I'm your host, Sarah Malone, owner of Spark Fitness and Lifestyle Coaching and voted Yahoo Finance's top 10 female coaches to follow in 2021. I believe everyone has a fire inside them, a powerful purpose, a story waiting to be told, and everyone can uncover and unleash this power. Every day you have the choice to either let your experiences shape you or take control and use your experiences to shape the world around you. You were made to experience happiness, freedom, joy, purpose, love, passion, and abundance. Disrupt the status quo, think for yourself, and join forces with those around you doing the same. Join me for thought-provoking conversations along with the strategies needed in order to help you ignite your spark within. Welcome back. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Today, we'll be diving into another solo cast on the topic of neutrality. And this concept originally became popular and known from the Stoics, the Stoic mentality of, of neutrality. You can look into any of the Stoics and see that they, they gracefully followed this philosophy in their life. And this is what allowed them to maintain a sense of uh, peace per se, or rather sound of mind and thinking and being able to take actions, even in the heat of some of the highest emotional circumstances. So how, how I want to chunk this up today is, first of all, I want to explain the importance of, of living a life from a place of neutrality. Um, but in order to do that, we must you know, discuss some of the misconceptions, some of the challenges, and then reframing what this concept means, because I, I think that it has a, um, a misconception in the terms of, of taking neutrality and thinking that it's emotionlessness of not having emotion. And I've, I've even heard people go so far as to say, you know, there's never a picture of Jesus smiling and to say that he lived a life of neutrality. And while I think this is somewhat of a stretch because we don't know if Jesus smiled or how often he did or what stance he took, we simply know his teachings and how he lived his life. And, and he certainly seemed to at least adopt the philosophies um, in the frame of mind in which I'll go into as we're going through this episode. So it's not that we're saying neutrality is a sense of not having emotions or not having feelings or, uh, you know, trying to make believe a world that isn't true for you. We're not saying to try to convince yourself um, or to manipulate yourself into thinking that something is good when it's when it's not, or just trying to talk yourself out of your feelings. So I really want to make that known in the beginning, uh, A, so you continue to dive in and know that I'm not trying to manipulate your feelings and I would never encourage anyone to do so, but rather our feelings are something to be, to be discovered from a place of curiosity and of learning and of information, right? Our feelings are simply um, a piece of information that our soul is giving to us in order to help us live a more fruitful life. Uh, and so, so first and foremost, let's get that out there on the importance and the purpose of 
emotions and feelings and why us as human beings unique to other living creatures are given this gift of emotions and feelings. I believe that animals have emotions too. I just believe that there is a difference in consciousness of being able to, I mean, listen, some people may disagree with me. I think this human experience is is a is a divine gift from the heavens so to try to get away from some of the things that make us human seems contradictory even in the highest of spiritual ascension if you will or the spiritual advisors so we're not saying get away from your feelings but in this in this in this life of neutrality there is so much to be gained here and it, to me, it actually seems like we can reframe this and say more of a life of peace um, because it puts you in the driver's seat and it, and it also relinquishes control of the uncontrollables. So, so let's dive in. So first of all, we've discussed how being neutral doesn't mean emotionless. But but at the at the underlying tone of humanity is this thing called feelings and feelings are very powerful. They are very powerful motivators, both positively and negatively charged. And let me rephrase what I mean by positive and negative. I don't mean good and bad. There is if we think of life as a battery rather than a, a good or bad, there's a positive charge, there's a negative charge, and these are each going to pull in opposite directions. So when I say positive, negative, I do not mean good or bad. Good or bad is simply a perception of the mind. Positive, negative is simply a law of nature. Okay. Um, and that goes deep too. We won't take, we won't take that time to go into that in specific, but feelings have the potential to be charged, positive or negative, and they will drive us. They are our main drivers. Now, feelings typically, now what, what drives our, let's back up a second there. So our thoughts are what generate our feelings and our feelings are what will generate and typically dictate our actions. So it serves us to be very mindful about how we're thinking and framing circumstances, situations, events, people, ourselves in our life. Because if we're, if our biggest source of communication is our internal dialogue, which it is, ask any psychotherapist or psychologist or anybody who practices NLP, the, the thoughts, the, the, the highest form of communication you have is that communication with yourself in the form of thoughts. And usually it's the form of ans uh, asking and answering questions. Um, and we'll go into this in detail in just a little bit. So our thoughts generate our feelings. Our feelings dictate our actions. And our actions are really what creates our life. Um, and this could be a, a productive or an unproductive life. And so when we form beliefs or feelings about certain circumstances, our thoughts usually change. And when these thoughts change, so do our feelings. And, and then the car gets going. Okay, then the car gets going in the direction that our feelings will point us. So why this is important and how this pertains to neutrality? Well, let's be real. This can happen in an instant. We'll take a couple examples here of some, we'll take an example of both, of both ends. Some common examples of emotionally hijacked uh, thoughts um, or some, some circumstances that can emotionally hijack you um, and send you into a state of and an operating system of fight or flight. Um, and these we would usually deem as bad. I would deem them as negatively charged. They're pulling you back and you're fighting against them. Um, and then we'll go into some common examples of some emotionally high moments, some, some that may fuel you. Again, all of these start with a thought. Well, actually they start with a, a moment, uh, an event of some sort which leads to a thought instantaneously, 
um, that forms into a belief, these things will cause an emotion to come forward. And that emotion will start driving an action or a reaction. Most often it is a reaction. If we are talking action, we have done a good job of pausing, understanding, um, digging into the feeling in order to take intentional action. So let's be very clear on that. Action is something that is that is done from an intentional place, meaning you've put some thought into it and you've, and whether that thought was productive or unproductive, I'm not to say, um, of a reaction is when you just instantly feel an emotion and you react your body, your system, your, whatever happens in there is a reaction. So examples of this, um, a relationship ends and you, the thought is um, this person doesn't want me. This feeling is shame and guilt. And then this feeling is to shut down or shut that person out. So what ends up happening? You lash out, you push them away, you block all forms of communication. Your reaction is a result of the thought that this person doesn't want me or I'm not wanted. And I feel shame or guilt or embarrassment, or hurt. All of these are just hurt. And so now I'm going to push away and I'm going to, uh, in, in, in other terms, hurt that person back. This is reaction. And this all stemmed from the thought that this experience, this breakup is bad. This is a bad experience. This person doesn't want me. I'm not wanted. Or here we go again. Or, um, uh, you know, just the thought of being rejected or unloved. And so this forms into hurt or shame or embarrassment or even fear um, or regret, you know. And so then the uh, the reaction then is to shut down, shut the person out. And, and in turn, this hurts another person. This is reactive thinking. And this is being charged by a negatively charged emotional response or thought. Another another example of an emotionally hijacked moment. Let's take one that can be relatable to most. Um, well, we could use the example of COVID. So an experience like COVID happens and the thought could be, um, you know, A, that this is bad and B, um, the world is coming to an end. <laughs> Let's just go as far as some of these people would say, the world is coming to an end. Um, this produces an emotion of fear, of fear and anxiety and uncertainty. So what this leads to is taking actions of protection, of relinquishing your control to another because of all the uncertainty. It produces actions of turning away from meaningful things and meaningful interactions and plugging into more of that fear so you can anticipate what's coming next. Um, and we can see how this can quickly, quickly derail someone um, as far as living a life of meaning and purpose and fulfillment. Now, we all know those people in our life right now. It seems like the world has split in two different groups. One who is living in that fear and needs to know that next, what's happening next, and they're all plugged into the TV, producing more thoughts of fear and uncertainty and anxiety, uh, and, they're, and they're missing it. And they're missing the, the life that is to be lived right now in the present moment. So those are some common examples of emotionally hijacked, or I should say circumstances that become emotionally hijacked. I don't think we need to serve any more examples. I think that you get the picture. And if you would like to think of an experience or a circumstance in which you've encountered that that can relate to this side of the spectrum, I'm, you can plug that in 
right now, or, you know, we can go so far as to take the experience of a death or a, or a loss of some sort. And the thought would be that this is so bad. I lost this person. What am I ever going to do without them? Um, all these thoughts begin to cycle and spiral. And listen, even if there's no action or reaction on the other side of some of these negative thinking behaviors, the point is that it is taking you away from love, happiness, and joy, and purpose. It's hijacking your life. And the common denominator with all of these is that coming back to neutrality, is that we're looking at this through a lens of good or bad, that everything that happens to me is either good or bad. But here's the thing with the law of neutrality. All things just are until we define them as good or bad. So this is a both very empowering and it can it may be even stirring up some internal conflict or pushback in you to say no 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 that's not true but but if we just think about that if we take our our own our own personal objective our own bias our own wants needs desires and our own blueprint for how the world should be in order for us to maintain happiness this is the truth have you ever had a situation where Someone's telling you about a story of a breakup or, or moving or moving somewhere or losing a job and you're, you're, you've seen their life and you've seen how they were in that relationship or you saw how they were at that job and you keep thinking to yourself, this is a blessing in disguise. And all they see is the bad is how it's the end of their world and how, you know, how are they ever going to overcome this and, and all of these things. Well, what's different? It's just your perspective. That situation from an outsider's perspective, it just is. And excuse these notifications on my computer that are popping up in the middle of this podcast. Um, but all, that situation, it just was until someone decided to give it a definition of good or bad. Neutrality would say this. Yes, all things that happen are period. And now I get to choose how to view that. The, the challenge in this is that we are all emotional creatures. So we cannot just say, turn off the emotions. We cannot just say, stop feeling that way, or you shouldn't feel that way because this, this could be a very good thing. That may very well be the case, but again, emotions are drivers. And so instead of doing that, first of all, what that does to us is it puts, puts us in a position of victimhood. And this immediately takes us out of the drive, being the driver of our own life. This is immediately saying that this happened to me completely outside of my control and it's bad. And now I can't get out of this hole because I'm trapped with these emotions here. And it's driving me. It's learning how to be a craft, uh, an artist of your own life. And if you, if you want, what what will really help you too is I a couple of weeks back I just recorded a podcast on emotional regulation. So that might be a really good precursor or or something to listen to after this uh, once we've gotten the concept of neutrality down. To go listen to that show uh, because it it. It, it frames how to become an, a more emotionally regulated person. And if you can practice and exercise your ability to become emotionally regulated independently, right? In, independently, meaning yourself, you don't need any outside sources. You don't need anything like that. Then you can come back to this neutrality topic and you have a, a much better, a much better tool belt and you have greater tools to allow you to actually do that. See, all of this is doing is taking you out of the driver's seat of your own life. And now you're the passenger, which in, its, in and of itself is a very poor place to be. It's a down and out place to be. Okay, so let's go on the other end right now uh, before we dive into the, the next points. 
is the common examples of emotionally high moments. We've all experienced these too. We we can't just talk about the negative without also talking about the positive. And I'm one to always like to follow up the negative with the positive because who wants to be left with the negative? So some uh, some emotionally high moments would be, uh, well, well, um, getting into a relationship would be a really high moment. This means that you're wanted. <music> Hey everyone, I hope you're enjoying the show. Hey, I'm gonna make this really quick. On October 20th through the 23rd, if you are a woman or even if you're a man who knows a woman, any woman that would benefit from this experience, I'm hosting a retreat with my dear friend, Kim Egger in Arizona in the beautiful and spiritual Red Rocks of Sedona. We are very excited to bring this retreat. I've been hard at work at creating the content for this retreat for the past two years ever since the pandemic hit and what I realized is that these women all people really but right now we're focused on the healing of the divine feminine and this is really just going to provide a space for growth for healing for rest and reprieve as that is desperately what we need right now and the contents and the guidance of somebody facilitating an actual growth experience instead of leaving you out in the cold you know if if traditional therapy doesn't appeal to you which it doesn't appeal to most then this is a great way to experience the healing and transformational experience that something like that can offer you but in a place where it's completely away from your normal routine family friends and environment it is a chance to connect with other women that are like-minded and on the same pursuit as you. And we're just gonna spend three nights together in the beautiful Red Rocks of Arizona, healing, growing, doing the work, meditating, doing breath work, and exploring nature. So if this calls to you, if this appeals to you, we have limited spots available for this retreat and we're just so excited to bring it to you. So you can email me at sarah at sparkflc.com or at any of the links in my social media bios, you'll find a link there to book a connection call with me just to make sure that this retreat truly is for you. I also wanted to make an announcement of our sponsors of the show and just thank them. First sponsor is Spark Fitness and Lifestyle Coaching, my baby. Uh, This is a holistic health and wellness company that has expanded over the years to include things like Reiki and energy healing, guided and channeled meditations. We do activations of spiritual gifts. We also offer live in-person events for women only and for men and women, like the yoga and sound bowl healing sessions and the full moon women's gathering. There is so much to offer in this one space, fitness, nutrition, holistic healing, uh, you name it. And it's gonna be covered under mind, body and spirit with Spark. And I'm very honored to partner with other partners and investors now to be able to sponsor this show. Our next sponsor, Juice Plus. I've said it and I've said it ad nauseum now that I am not a huge supplement fan, but Juice Plus captured my attention with its ability to bring um, an immunity aspect to me and help me to function at a higher level, which I was shocked to find out that we are recommended to consume nine to 16 servings of fruits and vegetables a day. And I don't know about you, but that's a lot of food to consume. And with our busy lifestyles, which I'm not condoning by the way, it can be hard to consume that much food. So what's cool about Juice Plus is that all of this is holistic. It is legitimately powdered fruits and vegetables in a capsule so you don't have to drink a nasty fruits and greens powder. They also come in gummies if you're not a pill swallower. I don't mind it. So I do the reds, the greens, and the purples and their fish oil, their omega blend. And I have to say, you know, aside from just taking care of my health, which sometimes can be un- unseen and unfelt, I legitimately feel a difference in my ability to recover, in my health and vitality and energy. And it's almost like a space is created in your system and you just feel like things are more oxygenated, which come to learn that's it's 
sole purpose to oxygenate your system. So as an athlete and as a workhorse, even if you don't work out strenuously, uh, even if you just live a lifestyle once you're working a lot, you're creating what's called oxidative stress in your system. And oxidative stress has can be very detrimental. You know, it's what reduces your immunity. It's what causes inflammation. It's what harms recovery and muscle building, uh, among other things. So Juice Plus has been a huge crutch and, a, and an important aspect in my own journey, um, not just athletic endeavors, but health as well. So if you need any more information on those, please hit the links in the show notes. They'll take you directly to Spark, the retreat page, and then Juice Plus. And hey, if this podcast is adding value to your life in any way, I just want to ask, you know, there is a donate button. You can donate whatever, however little or or as much as you want. It does not have to be recurring. But just as a thank you for, you know, continuing to provide valuable content on this page, it really helps to keep this podcast going and just supports good quality information. You can find that link in the show notes as well. It's what end, it's what began this show in the first place and everything is welcome. You know, at the end of the day, my mission is just to continue bringing you high quality, good conversations, think a place to come to learn and hear vulnerability and then so that you become a stronger and more capable human being as well. So anything is much appreciated to help continue this show and Before you get bored and start skipping, let's get back to the show. And, and this will, you know, this will create a feeling of happiness and joy. And you may even feel a, a a spurt of creative energy in your workplace, right? Um, this, this, this thing we called social media could be a, a positive driver. If you're experiencing a lot of feedback on social media, giving you feelings of whether they're real or not, giving you feelings of acceptance and worthiness and value and love. And so, so wherever this, we're getting this feeling, we're going to continue to go, to go back to Now, here's my point with these. There are a lot of moments which you can think of that have happened to you that made you feel really, really good. And these things are great. We should relish in them. We should enjoy that moment. We should really uh, soak it up and, and be proud. But, but here's the kicker here. A, we need to be very careful about what is giving us those positive emotions because anything outside of ourself is again taking us out of that driver's seat and putting us into the passenger seat but b we also need to be very careful because in this in the case of social media if we are relying on the positive feelings that we get from a virtual and in all sense of the the in in every sense of it um fake form of connection and love well we're putting ourselves in a position to to be very starving for lack of better terms and i i mean that in the way of being emotionally starved because while we're we're getting this hit of the feeling and it's driving us to do more of that it is simultaneously taking us away from what's actually going to sustain that in us, which is real connection. So again, these are all great things that we're getting these great feelings and they're driving some actions and, and it could actually result in a very fruitful and productive life. But my caution here is not to say, you know, don't enjoy the happy moments too. My caution here is just to say, have a sense of awareness of internal awareness and external awareness that says, where is the main source of my drive coming from? Do I need something to happen to me to produce a good feeling to get me motivated and driven to go forward and do good in the world? Because if that's the case, we are in a lot of trouble because 
that is something we cannot control. So if the good thing that was giving us that good feeling stops, which it inevitably always does because everything is always changing, then that must mean that you would stop too. Okay, this is the concept of like, I just wrote a chapter in my book about not taking the, the criticisms or the compliments too seriously. Because anytime we need an external source to drive us, to fuel us, to direct us, we are no longer in the driver's seat of our life. And we are outsourcing our happiness to someone or something else that says, X has to happen in order for me to feel this, because when I feel this is the only way I'm able to do this. And hopefully that would be your purpose. <laughs> okay. So, so either which way, and this is, this is exactly what I mean about being positively and negatively. So uh, negatively is just a slower vibration of anger, fear, depression, anxiety, um, and positive is a faster vibration, emotional energy uh, that we're talking about today would be, uh, you know, a, a love, a joy, excitement, um, being wanted, uh, gratitude, and things things of this nature. So <laughs> the neutrality, again, coming back to neutrality and why this is so important is not just to say, don't feel positive things, don't feel negative things. It's to say, all things that happen to me, they just are. Then I'm going to take a second step here in pausing to say, I'm going to define this for me. Even if I still have to feel those feelings of guilt and shame and whatever that may be, even if I still feel those feelings, I can sit with them, discover, be curious, what about this situation is causing me to feel guilty? What about the situation is causing me to feel shame or to feel fear? Once you discover that, it chops the legs out from underneath that negative or positive drive. So you can stay rooted in yourself and take the necessary actions forward with a blessing of a learning experience. It's the ability to pause and reframe everything for a positive drive in your life. And by positive drive, I don't mean good. I just mean use it as a part of the canvas of you and create some character and, and maybe redirect the course of your life for a second. So in all things, we have the opportunity to view or use our experiences as a source of, and this is what the benefit of neutrality would be, we could use it for fuel, growth, and learning. We could view it as a source of protection. We could view it as a source of redirection. We could view it as a source of healing. So in the terms of a breakup or a lost relationship, we can view this as protection. You know, if we form the belief that everything is always happening for us, not to us, then this breakup, this loss of the relationship is somehow, maybe I can't see it right now, but it's somehow it's protection for something in the future. It's protection for me or for them <laughs> or both, probably both. It's redirection. Maybe you lost that job or maybe the world shuts down and you had to, um, you know, be creative and think of a new way to make a living. Maybe this is redirection. Maybe this is redirecting you towards what you're really passionate about and what your true calling is rather than just working a job for money your whole life. Maybe, maybe this loss of a person, whether in the form of, uh, God bless, death, or, or again, a breakup, maybe it's for the purpose of healing, 
Maybe this was the catalyst for your healing of a deeper wound that really needed to be addressed that you weren't facing. Okay, because if if a feeling is coming up of guilt and shame or of abandonment from a relationship, it's not because of that relationship. It's because of a deeper seated root of of these feelings of being abandoned or feeling shameful about something that will root you back to an original trauma that induced your your spiritual response or reaction of this feeling. And that was my wordy way of saying, maybe this was a reminder that, hey, you've got to go back and look at some of these things because if this person leaving you caused you to feel all of these things, there's not something wrong with that person. There's something wrong here in my heart. And I could put myself on the chopping block to say, if I constantly feel abandoned by people when they leave or when they are just disconnected from me in a way, that is, that's a me problem. That's a me problem. And this is an opportunity for me to look deep down inside to say, Sarah, Sarah, why do you continually feel abandoned when people are just being themselves? What is it? that is causing you to be in a position to constantly feel abandoned. And this would lead me down a road of addressing my deep seated fear of abandonment all the way back to a childhood. And it would allow me to discover that my, my actions actually uh, uh, a, my inability to, to connect on an intimate level because of that fear, okay? So now I'm not connecting with the right people because of my fear of abandonment. So I'm not actually being intimate in my connections or connecting with the right people where I'm able to be intimate because that's just safer. That's safer. If I'm not connecting with the right people, then I don't have to be faced with the opportunity to be intimate or vulnerable. And then when they leave, I can't be so upset. Okay. Whoa. That's a huge opportunity because now I'm like, okay, eyes open. Just because this one experience happened to me, it allowed me to sit back and say, okay, 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 okay. Neutrality would say this, this experience just was. However, my body and my mind is coming up with some very interesting feelings and thoughts about this situation. Where is that coming from? And then if I heal and fix that, then I can say, oh my gosh, my whole life, I haven't been connecting with the people that are truly for me all because of this silly fear of abandonment. I can change that. I'm going to change that. I'm going to start to open up. I'm going to start to be vulnerable. I'm going to start to, to attract and manifest those people in my life that are able to do the same thing. And then I, A, feel like I've invested, that I've invested to a point where even if they leave. I'm okay. Because I was me. And I know that I can only feel abandoned when I abandon me, meaning I'm not authentic to me. Meaning I attach myself to that person more than I attach myself to me. Which would mean that if they leave, they take me with them. And now I'm really abandoned because they took me with them because I allowed that. This life of neutrality is beautiful. It's beautiful because it must exist with the core belief that all things are happening for us, not to us. That God is at work behind the scenes in some majestical way, and he will use anything 
that happens to us for his greater good. It tells us that the only way something is good or bad is by the power of our mind, which is really where the enemy lives. It's in the power of our mind. It's one of the reasons that meditation has become so important for me because it allows us to quiet the mind, not eliminate thoughts, common misconception in meditation. If we're clearing our mind of all thoughts, we really actually open ourselves up to the potential of darkness coming in as well as light, but you don't have control over that. So the goal here is not to eliminate or empty your mind of thoughts. The goal is to become an observer of your thoughts so that you can position yourself in such a way that were to say, mm, this doesn't really serve me. I'm going to let that go. Or this is really in alignment with my soul. Or at the very least, this thought, <laughs> this belief, if this belief or this thought is driving me in a direction that is benefiting myself and other people, it's greater for the world. This is something that this is something that can serve. This is something I can keep. And that would be the neutral mindset. It also means on the flip end of that, that thoughts and emotions excluded, the other half of this neutrality mindset would take me back to Jesus Christ himself. Um, you know, here we have a man who was completely focused and dedicated to the call on his life. And he was not concerned with the opinions the thoughts, the words, or even the consequence of his own actions. He simply went and it was like, you know, everything that's coming in at him, it's either helping him get there or, or it's a threat to it. And in a non-emotional way, it was simply his ability to stay on that path, that straight a head path, recognize the, the various energetic poles that were coming in and identify, um, is this aligned with my path? Yes or no? Quickly, here we go. Nope, get away from me. Or yes, here we go. This is part of it. That is a neutral way of living that's, that's saying, I, I'm not concerned with your feelings. I'm not concerned with how I feel in doing that. If you want to go, you can go. But this, this isn't in line with my path. And that's the other beauty of being neutral. Is that we don't, we don't sell ourselves to others. That were to say, if I really lived in my truth, <laughs> I'm about to go there. I'm about to go there. If I really live in my truth, that means that I'm going to upset people. I'm going to hurt people's feelings. And that could result in a backlash towards me. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do it anyway. Because living my truth is more important than pleasing other people. Living my truth is more important than pleasing other people. And that's when we can really master this emotional regulation and this law of neutrality, that we can zone in on the truth that is within us, meaning the truth about the call of our life, what that looks like, what it doesn't look like, and formulate our life from that place. Being neutral about the opinions, the voices, or the actions of other people as a direct reflection of our choices, words, or directions. Let me say that again. That means being neutral regardless of the words, actions, or thoughts of other people as a direct reflection 
of our choices, actions, and directions. Reworded a little bit there. (laughs) That's what being neutral means. It really means a living your truth. Living your truth and not becoming emotionally hijacked. The reason this is important is (laughs) picture with me, fantasize with me, if you will, a life in which everybody is doing this. Everybody is living a life of neutrality, or should we reframe that to say truth, their truth, living their truth. Um, This, what this looks like is nobody's concerned about what, what you choose to do is what you choose to do. And how it affects me doesn't really matter. It's your truth. And I'm not hurt by, I'm not, my feelings aren't hurt by, by you doing your thing. I'm going to keep doing my thing. My feelings are hurt by you over there doing your thing, which means everyone is living their calling unbothered by how the, the choices of another affects them emotionally. Now, the naysayers and the the 2% are going to come in and say, well, you know, um, well, what about murder and all these things? Well, murder is in nobody's calling. Nobody's called to murder. (laughs) That's a direct reflection of what we're talking about, the opposite way of being emotionally hijacked. That is not neutrality. (laughs) People don't kill people out of out of a neutral mindset and out of a mindset of this is my calling. So if everyone's truly doing that. What we experience is a utopia. We experience heaven on earth. That's what we experience. Steadfast, rooted, still, and grounded in yourself and in the truth that is yours, that is also aligned with the truth with a capital T. Because if you're living in your truth, lowercase t, it will be aligned with the truth. And that is bringing heaven to earth. So again, just to recap, uh, neutrality and misconceptions would be that we're emotionless. This is not the case. The challenges would be becoming um, emotionally hijacked, which is another term of being emotionally stalemated. Um, And if we want more concept on this, go back and listen to the Emotional Regulation Podcast episode. Um, So yes, we've done some common misconceptions, but ultimately I want to leave you with this. Overall, to define a life of neutrality means that you're in the driver's seat of your life, that you're sitting firmly placed in this driver's seat, and that all things that are coming your way as you're driving down the highway of life, a stop sign simply is a stop sign. It's pausing you for a moment, but it may be protecting you from something. You choose how to view that. And then however you view that, will cause you to feel a way that will affect the quality of your journey forward. If this stop sign is a nuisance to you and you get frustrated and anxious because you need to be going faster, then as soon as you get away from that stop sign, you're going to be frustrated and anxious and just speeding down the way. And this speeding could result in a crash that will deter you a lot worse than the stop sign did. Neutrality would say, okay, I am simply at this stop sign. And now I can recognize that I feel a little frustrated. That's a me issue. I can calm it down and I can choose peace in this moment and to say, "Hmm, it's a small little stop. I've got a whole journey ahead of me. Maybe it was protecting me from something. 
Here we go. Onward. This is all about quality of life. It's about being mature enough, grounded enough, and aware enough that your emotions aren't driving you and that you don't need an external source to create a feeling in you that gives you a quality of life that you like. You have the ability to create the quality of life that you want. And you can do that by first becoming neutral. And then when you do that, you take the actions that a neutral person would, and this creates the feelings that you truly desire. I hope this helped you. I hope this brought you value. If it did, please, 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 please share, subscribe, rate, all of these things. This is not for my ego trip. This is for bringing value to other people. And ultimately, uh, my goal is to reach as many people as I possibly can in my time here on this earth. Neutrality, <laughs> being totally neutral is every for every person that listens to this, you know, it's just a joy and a blessing for me to have a voice and be able to bring that to any ears that are open and that it falls on and that is willing to hear this information. Um, I got a lot more where this came from, but until next time, uh, we will talk to you guys very soon. God bless you and uh, I love you all. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Ignite the Spark Within. If this podcast brought you value or you think it would bring someone else value, please hit that share button. My mission is to reach and help as many people as I possibly can. And you just never know who could use that one good piece of information. And hey, if you have any topics, discussion questions, or ideas for future episodes, you can reach me directly at sarah at sparkflc.com and just write podcast in the subject line. And if you haven't already, please rate the podcast on your favorite podcast channel. This helps bring awareness to the show. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're alerted for all future episodes. Please go ahead and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And if you're interested in pursuing coaching for yourself, you can visit sparkflc.com for more information.